When we started getting involved with this project, this schoolyard every day had 22 cars parked in it, driving in and out during the school day while the kids were out here on recess. And in addition to that, we had a huge dumpster with trash and sort of urban goo oozing out of it. So that was an unhealthy situation that there was just no reason for it. And at first, our base requirement was just getting the cars and the dumpster out of here. And then we were able to move on and say, OK, this is a schoolyard in a city. Many of these kids, they don't have the benefit of seeing season changes. And we have enough room here to actually put some green garden in here so they can start enjoying the wonder and magic of plants. And then at the same time, we were contacted by the school district to actually think very creatively about our schoolyard. And we all realized this was an opportunity to actually try and be a model for other schools in terms of making the schoolyard sustainable. So we started thinking about the greening aspects of the school and the stormwater drainage in particular. My goal in terms of working with the school district is really working towards being green inside our building as well. Things like more efficient heating and cooling system, possibly a gray water reclamation system where we'd be pulling the drainage from our roof and pumping it back in to run our toilets. Using green products in the building for cleaning. So taking this green idea from the outside and going inside and start greening the inside of the building as well. We worked with a very wonderful group here in the city called the Community Design Collaborative who brought a volunteer group to work with us to start developing master planning concepts. We had parents involved and some teachers and then community partners like the Horticulture Society, the Water Department and other partners. The Home and School Association here was really leading the effort. Um, so they more or less invited us and said, we, we really have this great vision, we want to transform our school, starting with the schoolyard, and can we actually make this a stormwater management project? In the past at Greenfield, the idea for water management was really get the water off site as quickly as possible. So everything was paved and all the runoff was directed to inlets along the site and into a piping system those pipes were directly connected into the city's combined sewer system. All of that water went down to a treatment plant where it was cleaned up and released back into the river. In heavier rains, much of that water then kind of overwhelms the system and it overflows into the Schuylkill River. The new approach really thinks about rainfall as the resource and it's part of a natural system. The idea is designing a landscape that can help absorb that rainfall. And that's how this schoolyard is transforming itself. The first thing I said, well, has anybody considered taking up all this asphalt? Because to me, the asphalt was the prime um, problem with the schoolyard in terms of its imperviousness. And then it turned out my initial assumption wasn't the most effective solution. Leaving a portion of the asphalt here helps the efficiency because it actually directs the water to the rain garden areas. The whole schoolyard doesn't have to absorb the water. We just have to have it engineered so that the infiltration areas we have either under porous paving or under the rain garden areas has the capacity to absorb all the water that drains off of the asphalt. In a schoolyard, you can't remove all the pavement kids are running back and forth, they're really active places. So we need hardscape, but that hardscape is draining into a rain garden. So that water will only make it into the sewer system in the heaviest rainfalls. So a project like this actually helps to reduce the number of those overflows into the Schuylkill River, which is only uh, like two blocks away from here. There's no substitute 
to actually physically walking over to the river, seeing the river, and realizing that all the water that goes down that drain has a very short path to get right into that river. Here's our little thermometer. We can see the different colors, so we can figure out what temperature it is. Yeah. It's a little kind of red and it's green in here. 70% of the children here are actually bused through the lottery system from all over Philadelphia. So those kids arrive in the morning on a bus and then they go to school and at the end of the day they get on the bus and they go away. A lot of those kids are never exposed to the fact that a block away is the river. It's a multi-pronged approach we have where we realize the integrated curriculum is just as important as the physical improvements, if not more so. There's a difference in looking at asphalt versus looking at trees and plants that flower in the spring and give fruit in the late spring and early summer and there's actually giving back something to you as a, as a kid. You can go pick the blackberries or you can go pick the pears from the pear tree or those kind of things. It's just sort of a different interaction with an urban environment. Anybody want to guess what kind of mint this is? Smell it, taste it. Like a peppermint? Spearmint. Spearmint. Uh, it brings an outdoor classroom for students. It gives them an actual real world connection to what they're learning in the classroom environment. There's different facets of this project that will change over the years in terms of how it interacts with the curriculum that they're learning. It sort of engages in a different way and cements it in the brain in a different way. You're in Center City here and you've got a forest in a schoolyard. This is planted to look like and be exactly like a Pennsylvania woodland forest. So in five, ten years, when you walk in here, you'll be kind of walking into a forest. So it's pretty cool. Is it a pear tree? It's a pear tree. You got if we don't expose the kids to the ideas of environmental stewardship and ecology and why we're doing this, we would not have been successful because the life of the project has to go on through the students themselves. Thank you everyone for coming tonight. This is a really important date for us. We have a whole group of parents as well as a number of community partners. One of the things that the Home and School Association felt very strongly about was to make the schoolyard part of the community's open space. Creating some more green space for this neighborhood in Center City that doesn't have a lot of green space immediately adjacent to it. It certainly is a challenge to start with a really big project. It is much easier to start small. It might just be one small garden or a tree planting project. One small project, it creates excitement and it creates interest and that can build upon itself. Something to engage the surrounding community and get them thinking about what the future of that school can be.